All right, everyone. Good morning. I'm Kelsey Litchfield and welcome back to another episode of the Illso Advisor podcast. Today, I am super excited because we are kicking off a new series with our soy envoys who are regional agronomic experts throughout the state with the Illinois Soybean Association. So what this series will look like each week, we'll be reporting on crop and field conditions throughout Illinois in a round table type of format and bring any issues that concern you, the grower should be aware of. So with that, I'll have everyone give a brief introduction first. So give us who you are, where you're located and what you do for work. Stephanie, I'll have you kick it off. Good morning. Uh, my name is Stephanie Porter and I am the outreach agronomist for the Illinois Soybean Association. I'll kick it over to Shelby. Good morning, uh, Shelby Weckel, sales agronomist with Eler Brother Seeds in Thomasboro, Illinois. I can go next. Craig Grafton, I work with uh, Bayer Crop Science. I'm in the plant breeding uh, division there and based in Monticello, Illinois, but I cover most of the Midwest in, in what I do, so fairly large territory. Eric Beckett, Build Agronomist with YFS. I cover five counties in East Central Illinois. Yep, and then I'm Drew Beckman. I live outside of Streeter, Illinois, and then I cover all of Northwestern Illinois as a regional field agronomist for Beck Hybrids. Great, thank you very much. So first I want to just give an overall crop conditions, update on crop conditions. USDA released their first weekly crop progress report, I believe it was last week. And then this week's report came out Monday. So I know honestly these numbers change, um, but I like to give just an overall basis before we head into our individual updates. So for the week ending April 7th, statewide corn planted reached 2% compared to the five-year average of 1%. Soybeans planted reached 2%. Winter wheat headed reached 2% compared to the five-year average of 1%. Winter wheat condition was 4% to very poor, 9% poor, 22% fair, 53% good, and 12% excellent. Second, the weekly drought monitor will be released this morning, and we'll show that here on the screen. The average temperature statewide last week was 46 degrees, 1.4 degrees below normal. Precipitation averaged 1.96 inches, which was 1.3 inches above normal. Topsoil moisture supply was rated 1% very short, 12% short, 68% adequate, and 19% surplus. Subsoil moisture supply was rated 7% very short, 20% short, 63% adequate, and 10% surplus. I know we're heading into a weekend that I'm sure will bring out some planters. I was seeing on the weather this morning 80 degrees in some spots, so we'll be seeing, I think, some, some work happening out in the fields. Long-range forecast is also predicting some rain in the next two weeks, so we will see all that, how it shakes out. So with that, I think I'll have Eric, if you want to lead us off with the first report, um, and then we'll just go around and provide some updates. Thank you, Kelsey. So uh, in the counties that I cover and everything, uh, there hasn't been much planting operations. Uh, there has been um, really the, the only planting operations that has occurred was uh, prior to April 1st, really that last weekend in March. Um, the main concern right now is controlling hen bit um, without, you know, being able to get in the field and do a lot of field work right now. Um, hen bit has been at the top of a lot of discussions I've had with a lot of our sales staff and growers is how do we control it and in a timely fashion and whether that's with a pre-emerge herbicide application or maybe even, you know, uh, going out there with a solo application and trying to control it. Um, the other thing that's starting to become a little bit concerning is some of the silver rye out there. Um, just like, you know, we haven't had good field conditions, um, a lot of our cereal rye is starting to get pretty tall in some scenarios too. So um, I would encourage growers that if uh, you haven't terminated your cover crops, that that may be a, a priority once we, uh, field operations are able to resume and rethink about um, the strategy you may use to terminate that. We're likely going to have to come up with a much more aggressive uh, strategy to get that terminated so it doesn't become a problem into planting. Um, I've been seeing some reports um, for the, from the West, um, from Mizzou, that black cutworm and armyworm seems to be an issue. So I think that's probably something that we need to start thinking about 
putting on our radar. If you got some black cutworm traps, stick them out see, so we can start monitoring uh, black cutworm. Um, we've got some traps out yet. We've got some traps out in our locally, uh, but yet to really have seen anything. But just also with the active weather patterns we seem to be getting into now, could see some cutworm activity later this season. Great update. Thanks, Eric. Um, the hen bit, that's been a problem around here too. And I keep seeing on Facebook, people say, oh, it looks so pretty, but I know the farmers don't like it. So that's definitely a problem. I was out checking a couple of our fields yesterday to see what, what was happening there. So definitely, definitely on topic. And thanks for providing some recommendations there. Um, but let's head over to Shelby over in Champaign, near Champaign. Good morning. Um, uh, follow up with what Eric had said. We, you know, henbit is the top priority for a lot of growers. Um, I've heard even uh, townspeople that really want to know what that beautiful flower is out in the fields. And again, it's not a flower to us. It's It can be um, a pain and will become a problem as we start tillage and everything like that. But there have been very little activity around here so far. Um, we've had two and almost almost three inches of rain since April 1st. And so there's been very little activity around here for planting or tillage. There was just a little bit of um, recreational tillage prior to April um, at the late part of March. So not much activity other than just sort of planting. I think once we uh, hit next week, if, if we miss this next rain, we would uh, be able to shake loose the latter part of next week with the temperatures. So we'll see what comes around then. Um, just working on being ready and uh, being active and available to our growers as they're ready to pick up seed and um, anxious to get our plots in the ground so that we can start seeing uh, testing and looking at uh, hybrids and varieties as we're going to be starting for looking for next year already. So otherwise very quiet in the countryside so far in this area. Thanks, Shelby. Yeah, when I was looking at the weather forecast every yesterday, I saw everything was out to the east and then maybe we'll get it in our area in west central illinois i think there's a good chance of not getting it so i think you're right it'll dictate what what happens what happens in the next 24 hours will dictate i think what happens this weekend so thank you yes we haven't gotten as much as they've called for but we're still getting um plenty of moisture which i'm 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 fine with the moisture and we need it moving into the season I was in a wheat field. Um, U of I is doing some wheat variety trials and ISA is funding a project there and I had to wear my muck boots. I mean, it was muddy. Um, so if that that's it. And Jessica, Dr. Rakowski said, it just kind of got like this where it was, it's been more wet. So definitely keep our eyes on that. Um, Drew, I'll head it over to you. Can you hear me now? Yep. There you go. All right. Must not unmuted. Um, so when I talk about my territory, I kind of cover uh, Route 39 west over to Iowa and then kind of that Macomb-ish area uh, north up to Wisconsin. So that kind of that segment. Um, so actually this morning, we're very somewhat fortunate. A lot of my growers would say we're skipping most of this rain. It's kind of skirting uh, my territory and, and keeping to the east. So um, with that, I actually put in my first corn plot yesterday. Uh, I would say with this, we're probably going to fire up and, and get a bean plot in here uh, mid mid morning uh, this morning. But uh, overall, conversation in our area very similar to everyone else. Um, a lot of conversation around head bit that's very popular, especially as we begin to reduce some tillage practices out there, going a little bit more strip till things like that. Um, also. Uh, just really kind of keeping growers calm, having a lot of conversations about how we need to uh, get the basics or the free things right. Uh, when we look at planting this spring, we need to make sure we're picking our fields or waiting for them to be fit. Um, especially that's going to be more prevalent on corn than maybe on soybeans. But, you know, having that conversation around making sure that our field conditions are, are good. And then actually our planting depth on both corn and soybeans, making sure, again, as commodity prices are staying a little bit compressed here, depressed here. Uh, that we want to do the do the free things correct that we know lead to uh, to yield, but uh, it'll be it'll things will be firing up here over the weekend, especially in that Tremont uh, south of their area. They're pretty dry. There's some sands, so we'll, uh, we'll see some planting activity really fire up kind of through that area. And as you move north, they're still going to be pretty wet. Route 80 north of 80, they're still going to be fairly wet from some of the other rains that we've had. So it may be a few days, but. Uh, missing this rain, what it's looking like we are going to is going to be a big, uh, big help for us to get get rolling. 
Thank you, Drew. That was a great update. Uh, let's head it over to Craig. Craig. Sorry, I might have said that wrong. No, you're good, Craig. It's all good. Um, yeah, I, I sit in the same vicinity as Eric and Shelby, so I really don't have a whole lot to add from what, what they mentioned. I think they hit on the main points that I was going to mention too, so I can skip that. But I would say too, that, you know, looking at the drought monitor, um, everything east of Illinois is fairly in good shape. Um, unfortunately, that's where all the rain's headed, so we're not going to see some relief west of Illinois. So, um, you know, that's something I've got my eye on as I, I look at trials, you know, outside of Illinois and and that sort of thing. So um, just keeping an eye on that. Um, we do have seed going in the ground in Kansas and Texas is in really good shape. So as far as corn goes, I don't know that we've got too much any soybeans in the ground as far as our breeding trials, but we are a little later than normal on in breeding trials because one, we don't have any replant to go with and sometimes getting seed, um, you know, just getting seed in hand to our growers or, farm, or our field testing network is a little bit delayed compared to what a, a farmer would be. But uh, yeah, I echo Shelby and Eric, they hit they hit the main topics I was gonna hit and, and you know, planting early is, you know, it's, it's April 11th here and we've still got time to quote unquote plant early uh, without any kind of yield penalties. So be patient. Let's let's get the fields fit and do it right the first time, so we don't have to try and try again. Definitely, well said. I see Kelly jumped on. Kelly, are you able to provide an update? Uh, yeah. Um, there's not much happening in southern Illinois. We got anywhere from four tenths to three inches of rain last night, depending upon where you were at. It very much needed. Uh, there's not been a whole lot of um, Planting activity took place. Um, ground is, I mean, it's been working beautiful. A lot of fields, a lot of anhydrous is on. Most dry is on. Um, a lot of burn downs on. Guys have just been sitting and waiting for temperatures to get right. Uh, no subsoil moisture below about three or four inches. Um, terribly dry. Um, so we were glad to get the rain. Uh, the cooler nighttime temperatures have kept guys from planting that and threats from seed dealers of no replant uh, seed available. So the, um, it's, uh, I, I, I was looking yesterday um, in 2012, I started planting yesterday and it was a disaster. So um, I'm glad. Uh, the, the interesting thing about uh, looking at the pictures from 2012 last year when we started planting is we were in short sleeve shirts, uh, the leaves on the trees, the trees were fully leaved out. It was dark green, absolutely beautiful. Uh, as you look around yesterday, uh, we're wearing long sleeve shirts, uh, very few leaves on any of the trees. Um, and you know, but we are 10 times drier than we were in 12. So, uh, totally different, um, start so to speak to the spring that compared to 12 um but again um there's a few beans have been planted early beans planted some of them are up some of them tried to come up some of them some guys don't even know if they planted any beans or not for sure they can't find them um corn i i, I literally know of only one field of corn planted and it was planted back and so early in march i don't know i haven't been back to look at it so um uh, as I tell my customer base, uh, it's not what day you plant, it's what happens every day after that. And we saw that last year with our June planted corn being the best corn we ever had. So um, planting dates are relevant from a standpoint of uh, it's got to go in the ground right. Thank you. Great analysis there, Kelly, from Southern Illinois. Um, Stephanie, I'll have you round it out. And then if anyone has any questions or anything, or if they want to go off of what someone else said, feel free, but I'll let Stephanie go first. So, um, I guess I'll, I'll start, um, before the 1st of April, um, there was a lot of field work being done. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily a lot of planting. I think there was rumors that people had planted here and there, you know, um, I like to say testing out the planter or stirring up the neighbor, you know, um, in the name of science. Um, so, 
Uh, not much going on there. It was just too cool to get that burn down on. And so I'll just echo again what everybody else is saying. I am getting a lot of questions on the Hembit. So it's it's one of those first winter annuals to bloom. And so we, you know, would like to get that um, taken care of before that happens. And so I think it's just a sign of um, people are getting antsy because that's just a sign of more um, winter annuals to come. And uh, we really need to take care of that. And with that comes the concern about those pests flying in. So also getting questions about that moths of cutworms and army worms. Um, Eric gets his gold star because I, my trap is unfortunately from University of Illinois is still in the box. Uh, I haven't been home, but I have been running back and forth between Bloomington and Taylorville. Um, so about August or August, about April 2nd, it's been a long week. Uh, April 2nd, we had got, uh, I felt like there was a little black rain cloud above me because we got four inches here in Taylorville. Um, but we farm just south of here in Nokomis and only got an inch and a half there. Uh, very, very happy about the rain. Uh, don't get me wrong, but we are wet. <laughs> um, we got another half, around a half inch on Sunday. Uh, my brother just texted me. He got a couple tents just south of us. So there is a range there. And then I did run out um, before this and um, got about a half inch here. Um, my brother did get a little bit more inch and a half um, at the farm. Um, so it just is raining. We're getting recharged um, with that moisture. Happy about that. And I guess the I'll echo what Craig said. Um, been doing a lot of radio interviews this week and definitely not time to panic. I'm getting a lot of questions about, you know, we just put such an emphasis on early planting of soybeans. And um, I think Kelly did a great blog um, and video that you put out not too long ago, Kelsey, about the myth about how you can just slam beans in the ground and they'll be okay. Um, we still worry about, you know, some compactions, whether that be sidewall or any kind of compaction with beans. We don't want to block those nutrients in water. So we, uh, so it is a concern, but there's no need to panic yet. That's one of the things I've been saying. We still have plenty of time. Um, I think uh, there's been a lot of research done at the university and others will echo that um, we have until the end of April, there's still time. Um, and if it warms up and, you know, get some wind every once in a while. It can dry out pretty quickly, depending on the soils, of course. So I think that pretty much covers everything. I do also want to say I have been getting reports of planting, which has been fun, um, whether that be just a uh, Snapchat here and there, or uh, a lot of um, our board members are on Snapchat. So that's fun. And so one of those is Brady Holst, who is in Augusta, Western Illinois, which has already been mentioned. Uh, they're not getting as much moisture. Uh, I think Greg or Greg, Craig, sorry, my husband's Greg and he's walking by. And Drew uh, mentioned about Western Illinois being a little bit drier. And so he is planting uh, in Western Illinois. And I saw a couple reports from Missouri and here and there where they must have pockets where they're dry enough or hopefully dry enough. So and other than that, the planters are lined up and ready to go. Yeah, actually, the plot that I put in yesterday was actually in north, uh, the very northeastern tip of Missouri. So they were uh, just getting fired up. A couple of our other customers, I got a weird territory that kind of juts into that area a little bit and uh, stopped in on a couple of other operations. And they were after lunch, they were going to the field. So it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty heavy planting conditions right there, um, right in that northwest, northeastern corner. So you said the planters are ready to grow. That's something else that's been very interesting the last two weeks is I've got a lot of customers that have gone back and got their old planter at the dealership because their new one hasn't showed up yet. I, I did see one on the highway yesterday. I did a double take and uh, the planters are, are, are getting delivered. Definitely a lot of things that have to come together to be able to go through the field. I have seen some planters outside shops. They're ready to go. Um, I feel like the overall messaging today is don't panic. There's still time. Um, when is, I guess, the right time to panic? When should 
growers be thinking, I mean, you can't do much if the ground's not fit, but what would you tell them maybe come the next couple of weeks, what to be thinking about, what should be on their radar then? I, uh, I'll, I'll try to answer that one, I guess. Um, there's no reason to panic. And, and I mean, you, you, if you list all the things you could control as a farmer, they're very few and weather, you cannot control the weather. You cannot control field conditions. And hopefully that's why you have crop insurance. If you remember 2012. And so, um, you know, when, when, when conditions are, I, I think, you know, like I said earlier, we just, we harp on this early planning thing to the point that, um, we, we just, we oversell it and, um, it's not what happens the day. It's not the day you plant. You do not control the day you plant, uh, and you do not control the conditions after that. So, um, I mean, we've seen, you know, success planting beans into August down here. Um, it's just what happens after you plant them. But, uh, if you got crop insurance, you know, the day you panic is the day, you know, up insurance deadline comes and you didn't get them planted. That's the day you panic. So we definitely got some time there. Anyone else have anything to add? Anything that we forgot today that you want that you want farmers or agronomists to be aware of? The one thing I would mention is again, kind of going back to Kelly's point, but think of 2019. Uh, I know in our area we didn't get a lot of corn planted until that second week of June. And it was very, very far from a crop failure. I mean, we had very, very good yields throughout the northern part of the state. Um, through that, we did have some prevent plant acres, but overall, excellent yields. And again, we went into good ground conditions. It did. It was a wet year overall. We did continue to have moisture, so that is uh, a factor that that impacted that. But again, don't don't rush. Don't push, uh, because again, we we raised very good corn even in the northern part of the state. Uh, planting into that late May, early June uh, time frame. I'll reiterate that. Be patient. We've got, you've got one time to get it right. Um, don't be anxious and make sure you use the, you know, you've got ideal conditions, um, soil moisture and temperature wise. I want to see that corn and beans up in less than a week. Um, take your time, be, be patient. And uh, when it's ready, then you can go. You know, and I think a lot of people have done a really good, um, collect a lot of data over the last couple of years. And I think a lot of it shows that, you know, I think even though we may be a little bit late this year relative to maybe the last year or two, um, but just think that, you know, we still got time, like everybody else has said, but, you know, it's still, I think it will be perfectly acceptable to start out with, with soybeans this year if grower wanted to. And then by, I would say by mid-May, you probably should be planting corn by then. And then if you still got beans left to plant, then finish up planting beans. But, you know, we've definitely seen corn kind of turn into that prima donna and it needs some special care and everything. And I think it's warranted that if we haven't finished bean operation, planting operations by mid-May, that we make that switch and we put a focus on corn and then go back to beans if we need to. Anything else? Anyone else? Last call. Final call. No, not to put Eric on the spot, but do you have um, a plan for cover crop termination just to just to touch that on that? And I know Kelsey and I've been talking back and forth on it. everybody's different. Every farm's different. Um, north and south is different. Um, but in your area, do you have a plan for the, the cover crop termination or what has been your advice? Yeah, so uh, some of our growers, they were able to get uh, their shill rye, especially we had one grower in our area that had really got aggressive last spring or last fall, right after harvest, you know, towards the end of um, September, even first October, got cereal rye seeded and everything. So that stuff was was pretty well off to the races. So we were able to get that stuff terminated um, mid-March. And so that that's looking pretty good. It was a pretty slow kill with glyphosate, um, still recommending glyphosate is the number one tool to specifically terminate cereal rye. Um, but now, you know, I, I was just up in the Gifford area yesterday and I've got one grower up there. He's got cereal rye is probably pushing 18, 20 inches. And so I'm starting to get a little bit nervous with that as far as, um, are, is, is he anticipating an aggressive enough plan? So where, you know, maybe typically a quart of glyphosate would take care of things, um, less than, you know, a foot to 18 inches, we may need to be thinking of rates maybe in excess of maybe 40, maybe 40 ounces by now. 
uh, if we do get some, you know, some bolting, some some good growth and everything out of the cereal right before we're able to get it terminated. Specifically, you know, if we get this rain next week and everything. And what I've been telling a lot of our growers too is have a very aggressive plan A, but then also think about having a good plan B and C uh, just to make sure plan A doesn't work. We've still got something in our back pocket that we can tackle this and it doesn't become a problem for us. All right. Well, I think we'll end it here for the week. Thank you all for hopping on and joining the podcast today. Again, we'll do it next Thursday. Um, we'll see how things progress, move along. It might be an entire different conversation next week. That's why um, I'm excited to do this series and see how things shape up from week to week. So again, thank you all for joining us today and we'll be back next week. <laughs>